On my eternal quest to turn Vim into Emacs, today we'll be looking at a graphical Vim client. In particular, we'll be looking at Go Neo Vim, which is a graphical Neo Vim client. Now, as you can see, all of your regular Vim configuration will still be working just fine in here. So my color scheme is working just fine. My Git gutter is fine. My file viewer or my file tree, I guess, is working just fine. So let's switch over to something like my bash profile, and then we can go back and switch back to my ZSH Emf. If I go and try to center the screen by going to insert mode, that's working just fine. My FZF is working just fine. And I think that's pretty much all of the major plugins. So it does everything your original NeoVim still will do. So you don't have to start all over from scratch. So what extra does this do? Now, obviously, being a graphical client, there is no reason whatsoever why you can't use your mouse, but seeing as though this is Vim, it's still a little finicky, like scrolling works fine, but anything outside of scrolling, and yeah, it's not, it's not going to be the best experience. Now, I know that a lot of terminals do support this as well, because I do use it in a lot of my videos when I'm showing Vim stuff off in Alacrity, but something that Alacrity doesn't support is ligatures. I know that there's a fork of it that does, and there's also a ST patch that supports them as well, but there's still a lot of terminals out there that don't have ligature support. Now, obviously, you'll need to have a supported font, but most ligatures seem to work fairly well. I know that some don't, like this one right here. I know that this right here should be a ligature, but it doesn't seem to work. Now, it could be a problem with the application, or it could be a problem with Thera code. I don't know exactly what the issue is, so if someone happens to know what the problem is, feel free to let me know down below. But other ligatures like this one right here seem to work just fine, so I have no idea what the problem is. Now, one thing you see in a lot of code editors is a minimap, so if we go into command mode, this is no different from the regular command mode, it's just a different way to, I guess, show it off. It's sort of similar to the way that, you know, VS Code does it. So if we run the command go nvim, you spell it correctly, minimap, it brings up this little thing on the side here, and you can actually go and click through it to jump to different points in the code. Now, I never really got used to working with a minimap, but I know that a lot of people really like them, and it's one of the reasons why a lot of people can't leave something like VS Code, because I can see how this would be useful if you got used to it. A really cool thing with Markdown files is it actually has a built-in Markdown preview. Now, I don't know what flavor of Markdown this is supporting, because it doesn't actually mention it on the GitHub page. I would presume it's probably fairly close to the basic Daring Fireball spec, but it could be something like GitHub Markdown as well. So, I would like to see that added to the GitHub page because there are very important differences between them and knowing which one's actually supported is pretty important. Now I know that it isn't supporting Pandoc Markdown because I've actually tested it with that and most of the document breaks. Now obviously things like lists and headings, they still work just fine, but when you talk about some of the extra additions that Pandoc adds in, most of those don't seem to work. And if the document happens to be really long, you can go and scroll through it as well. Now I've noticed that Scrolling with the mouse wheel doesn't really work super well. Now, I know that my mouse wheel was kind of broken in the first place, as you can see from trying to scroll over here, but this is worse than it normally is, so I'm not really sure what's going on. Also, when I scroll, it scrolls in the opposite direction that I'm scrolling, so yeah, I, I, I think that scrolling with the mouse wheel isn't working perfectly in this window either. A feature you see in a lot of code editors are workspaces, so if we go and run go nvim, uh, sidebar show. As we can see, we have a list of workspaces here. So these are, I guess, separate groupings of files you want to look at. So if we go and run go nvim workspace new, so this command right here, as we can see, we have another grouping in here. So we can actually go and switch through them by doing go nvim workspace and then go next, or there's also a previous option as well or you can obviously go and click through them and open up things in here. Now, because I don't have this set as my default code editor, trying to open up a file in here actually doesn't really work properly. So let's say I open up this right here. It's gonna go and open that up in regular Vim. So that's something that should probably be addressed. It should only open up things, you know, in the window while you have this window open. Also, I don't think there's a way to actually close this sidebar. I haven't seem to work out a way. I thought there might have been like a go nvim sidebar close or something like that, but or sidebar hide, but there doesn't seem to be one. So you're kind of stuck with this being here. I managed to close it once, 
but I, I'm not sure how I did that and I don't know how to do it again. If you enable it in the settings, this also has some level of session management as well. So if we go and quit this without saving it, and then we reopen up Go Neo Vim. As we're going to see, everything is left exactly as we left it. So to go and enable that, all of these settings are located in a folder in your home directory called Go Neo Vim in a file called settings.toml or setting.toml. Now this file won't be made by default, so I would recommend copying it from the GitHub page. So if we go down to, I think it's just called session. There we go. If you just set restore session to true, then it will actually remember your last session. Now, the other thing I came here for was for the status line. So if we go to this line right here and we set the status line visible to true. So this is the built in status line. And we also go and find the tab line. So the tab line is right here. Let's set this one to true as well. Obviously, if you have plugins that handle this already, you probably don't want to go and enable these. But if you don't have a status line already, then these can actually serve as pretty good alternatives. One of the features advertised on the GitHub that I don't really know the point of is being able to change your font based on whichever buffer you're in. So if for whatever reason you want to do that, you can. So basically you run the command go nvim grid font and then pass in the name of the font you want to use. So let's say JetBrains Mono. And as we can see, this is now using JetBrains Mono and this is still using Fira code. I don't know why you'd ever want to do that, but it's an option there if you want to. And another thing I don't understand is the quote unquote built in fuzzy finder. Now, it's not actually a built in fuzzy finder. What it actually is, is an optional plugin which adds in basically a GUI version of the FZF plugin. But I don't see any reason to use it. One, because it's a separate plugin, so it's going to have a different feature set. And two, because that feature set is actually smaller than the original FZF plugin. So unless you really want a graphical view of FCF, I don't really see any point of using it. But if you do want to use it, these are the commands you can use with it. And this is the plugin that you have to install. And there's also supposedly an indent guide, but I've never actually gotten it to work. So I have got it enabled as I'm going to show you in the config file. So go nvim and setting.toml. If we go down to indent, as we can see, indent guide is supposed to be enabled. But no matter what I do over here, as you can see, we're not really getting any indication of how I'm actually indenting stuff. And it's not just because this doesn't have a file type. I've tried it in code files. I've tried it in non-code files. I've tried it in, you know, markup languages. I've tried it in a bunch of different file types and I've never actually gotten this indent guide to actually work. So my assumption is, at least in this version, it doesn't seem to be functioning, but that actually would be a really useful feature. But it's not something you need a graphical view for because there are already plugins that add an indent guide into Vim. Since we're back in the config file, you can also go and set a transparency for the application. This is a value from 0 to 1. And the advantage of doing it through this method over doing it through like directly with your compositor is it's not going to make the text transparent. So some people are kind of bothered by the fact that using say Compton makes it so it's a little bit harder to read the text. Personally, I've gotten around that by just using a higher contrast theme, but I can see why it bothers some people. So this is an option if you do want to do that. And like with a lot of applications, this doesn't have the ability to use a backup font. Now, a lot of people will say to me, why don't you just go and use the patch version of JetBrains Mono? Well, what if I run across an emoji? So the patched version of JetBrains Mono will cover power line symbols, it'll cover nerd symbols, and it'll cover ligatures, but I still use emojis in my polybar configs. So... I'm kind of stuck there. And this doesn't actually query your font config to find out what your emoji font should be. It will either just fail to load the symbol or use whatever is available in the font you have set up. And because it tries to be fancy in the way that it handles spell check, it also introduces a few rendering bugs. So as you can see, I'm using a visual line and it actually cuts off some of the, uh, the lines in here, but only sometimes, as we can see, right here. All of this bit gets cut off, but this part's fine. And then there's a little cut in here. And I've noticed also sometimes when you have a lot of spelling mistakes in a document and then you try to scroll, it might actually drag this line all the way down the page. Now it's not happening when I try it over here, but I have seen it happen before. So I would just keep that in mind. There we go. So even though I've scrolled down, it's still showing that line there, which doesn't really make any sense. And that goes away when I actually take my line past it. Now, when I had initially planned this video, this was going to be really positive, but as I started using it during the video, more and more problems started popping up, and 
I can't in good faith say that this is a good way to work with NeoVim. I don't know if you noticed that earlier on, I might leave a timestamp up in the corner, but when I had my cursor on to the left side here, it actually removes some of the highlighting of this text. It doesn't seem to be happening right now, so I'm not sure what the condition to enable it is, but there's just all of these little problems with the application that make it so it's not really a great way to work with NeoVim. And unlike working with something like Emacs, you don't get the benefits of things like showing images or other cool things like that. If someone makes a NeoVim client where you can actually show images in it, that would actually be a killer feature. I would really like to see that. But as it stands right now, most of the graphical NeoVim clients and just regular Vim clients don't really make that much sense, I would say especially when everything they do can already be achieved by existing plugins. So, I think that's pretty much everything for me. I might cover another one, I'm not really too sure at this point, but for now that's everything I wanted to say. So, I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So, a special thank you to Joachim Kalbinian, Andrew Craig, Nathan Monster, Joseph, Peter D. Rode, Tony, Brennan, Donald, John, Marek, Mikkel, Nephite, Tees, and Zilver. If you want to go on small, I worked up with some links down below to my Patreon, Subscribestar, LibrePay, and Cointra, and all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And this channel is available on Library, BitChute, and BitChute, if you want to watch it on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. I know my shirt changed halfway through the video, and also it's like four hours later, if you notice my clock in the little, in the corner up there when I'm actually on my desktop. That's because I had to go meet my parents to go have some lunch. Anyway. I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.